Welcome back to By Your Side with Wise and Tino. We have some very special guests uh, in the building today. Uh, this is a bit of a different one for us. Uh, we haven't done even done this type of interview before. First off, I'll start with this gentleman. He is an award-winning filmmaker and musician. His first film, uh, Bra Boys, which is went on to actually be one of Australia's uh, highest grossing documentaries of all time. He's now back with a new film called Six Festivals, which is a coming of age drama set around three uh, adolescent teens and some of Australia's most iconic music festivals. But to tell you a bit more about in person, we have the executive producer, co-writer and director, Mac D'Souza. And we're also joined in the studio today by one of the stars of the film. Um, one of the heads, <laughs> one of the main acts in the film who plays Summer, uh, Yasmin Honeychurch. Guys, welcome to the show. Welcome Ooh. to By Your Side. Bless. Thanks yeah, for having you. Thanks for having us, guys. First off, man, I want to start. Thank you both for being here. I want to start off with you, Mac, real quick. Um, my bro, I've, I've been watching you, your journey uh over the years you know i'm a big fan um from from your musician from you starting as a musician as kid mac and then going on to to filmmaking and i've always like resonated with you you know what i mean man you've come from humble beginnings you come up from the maruba area and now you know look where we at i just need to ask first off how does this kid from maruba get into filmmaking tell us tell us the the early story <laughs> Thanks, friend. Um, likewise, back at you, man. You know, like I've, we've been watching each other from the sidelines, cheering each other on. It's uh, it's been it's been epic to watch. Um, I always find it like interesting that like, you know, people don't realize people like us weren't supposed to make it this far, and that's what I love the most about being here. You know, that's what's up. Um, We're here now, man. Say it loud, yeah, bro. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. I grew up in an in a in an area where like being creative was actually against the grain. You know, it was either you're you're a footy player, you're 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 a boxer, you you were slanging drugs, and and you know, I guess I was going against the grain because that's just that was my passion, and I, I just had an outlet. Um, mm -hmm. And it got to a point where people kind of started to see, you know, shit, he, he, he's good at this and he likes this shit, and they started sort of backing me a bit more. And the way I got into film was really through being obsessed with some of those uh, early surf movies, you know, and growing up in a surf centric community, you know, I would steal my sister's little camcorder, film my mate surfing, <laughs> make music, put it together and like just came obsessed with that little idea. Yeah. Um, and it just, it wasn't until, you know, after school where I studied film and, and music at uni, it, um, it sort of grew to what it is and, um, you know, made Bra Boys at an early age, which really kicked off my career and just didn't expect it to do that so soon. But, you know, I took it, grabbed it with both hands and, and here I am which was amazing. And one thing I've noticed then as you've gone on and, and as you're mentioning with your beginnings and such is like everything about your work and your art, it has a, a realness to it. Um, it's honest, you know, it's, it's, it's thought provoking. Um, I want to talk to you about authenticity, bro. Um, what does that mean to you? And, and I guess how important is that for you and the art that you create through film and it, through everything really that you're doing? I guess it, it all comes from, you know, the community that we grew up in you know i feel like growing up in a low socioeconomic area you know sort of i guess for lack of a better term ghetto with melting pot of, of cultures um we had to be we had to be authentic you know everything about where we grew up was was being true to yourself and you know i i grew up in that hip-hop culture as well and everything in hip-hop is authenticity and mm. i guess that just kind of evolved into my into my artistry into my film these young stories that uh, are gritty and from the streets and from that working class. And um, in order to tell those stories, um, particularly in music space, man, I feel like artists and, and music fans have a great bullshit radar. And yeah. so if you're going to do a story in that space, you're going to want to make sure it's authentic. And so authenticity was actually a key theme and word within the production of Six Festivals. Everything we did, uh, whether it's you know artist choice, song choice, scene scenes, dialogue, yeah. Everything had to go through this authenticity filter um, to make sure that it resonated with the streets. Really, that's just what it came down to. If, if you know, people could could watch this film and go, "Shit, man, that that's how we grew up." Oh, I see myself on the screen with some of those characters. Then I feel like my my job as an authentic storyteller was done right. One hundred percent. I want to jump right into the into the film Six Festivals. Now, um, I had the opportunity to see the premiere. Obviously, first off, congratulations on an amazing an amazing film. 
both Thank of you. you. Um, all the work came through. And obviously, you know, I was able to see it a quick early because your boy had his own little yeah. cameo appearance in the film. So <laughs> anyone, you know, watching at home, you're going you're gonna to see your boy on the big screen and all that. I want to give you your flowers as well, my man, real quick, just for even giving me an opportunity to be part of the film and, and just uh, showing my face and, and doing that. But first off, I want to get from you, man, in your own words, um, tell us about this film, the overall plot and why people need to get up and go see this important film. Mm. It's a coming of age drama. You know, it's a story of at the core of it all, a story of friendship. It's three young best friends, 16 year olds, two guys, one girl. Um, they break into their first ever festival. They jump the fence, have the time of their lives. And once they get caught, they get, um, it comes out as they're getting questioned by the police that one of them has a pending illness that the other two didn't know about. And so there's a bit of a time bomb with this illness. And so they make a, a pact within that time that he has left. They're going to go to as many music festivals and have the time of their lives. Um, when what's happening really is they're running from reality and not facing, mm. you know, the hard truths that, that they're facing. And it's all set in real music festivals. You know, as you, as you just said, uh, cameos, some of the best artists in the country. Um, and it's just, <laughs> almost a hybrid of documentary and, and scripted drama. It was just, is, uh, it was just starting to just jump in, but just even like the way that that was pulled off, like filming that environment of those festivals and, and capturing the essence of it was, was amazing. And then you were there. Yeah, I was, I was there for one of them. I was, uh, I believe it was yours announced, but I'm yeah. not going to give away too much. You got to watch the film if you're trying to see all that, you know, but uh, Yasmin, um, I have to admit it was my first time meeting you on set. Yeah. Um, I have to say like, I was completely blown away by, your confidence, like your, oh, your, you. your presence. I mean, um, your acting abilities, you, you had that star appeal, you, and you also, you're singing, you were, you were able to sing, but we'll get into that as well. But <laughs> please give us a bit for our uh, viewers and listeners at mm. home, um, you know, a bit about your backstory and how did you, and eventually end up coming to being a part of this film? Oh, damn. Okay. Well, I have been doing acting since I was eight. It's always something I loved. It didn't start off that way though. I, I actually wanted to do dancing because all the girls in my year were doing all dancing. Right. They got all the boys. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was like, it was like uh, this thing. I was like, yeah, I'm just going to do that. And then my mum was like, no, nah, like you've got to do acting. And then I actually did end up as cheesy as it sounds, falling in love with it. And then I've been doing it like since then. And I was presented with an amazing opportunity thank goodness to even audition for six festivals. I was like, whoa, this like this is really cool. I like mm. the script. Mm. I like the storyline. And yeah, I've just kind of been lucky enough to have this. And um, yeah, we'll see where it goes from here. But I just want to keep doing projects that really like, I want to tell the story. Um, even still get auditions. I'm like, I don't know this story. I just want to I want to do it justice the way that the writer's written yeah, it. And yeah. I think the way Mac writes is so authentic yeah. and so conversational. I mean, we had to change some things here and there where we were like, this sounds good. That sounds like I would say it maybe with my friends, maybe not. And um, Well, then with those changes, is that like, because I was going to ask you what, you know, a bit about your character. If, yeah. What can you tell us about Summer? And is there anything with Yasmin mm -hmm. that relates to Summer? Is there... Is, definitely yeah. <laughs> definitely uh wanting to sneak into festivals <laughs> <laughs> sorry to the yeah. splendor stuff so oh, yeah. <laughs> been sneaking it so you really you really embody really your, your, your character is that called method acting i'm a little <laughs> behind i don't know she really she's really out here i don't know it's it. post the film so it's just a bit like yeah. can't let go of something probably needs therapy type vibe yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you were mentioning also before uh mm. there was you and michael would go back and forth on your character yeah. And also Mac coming from that background of being an artist and being yeah. a musician, you can tell that he takes care in regards to um, some of his characters, music abilities and such. Now, if we can talk about it, I mean, you oh, yeah. displayed <laughs> some real music, to someone who's an artist as well and seeing you and sing and sort of perform for the first time. Um, is that something that you're working on outside of film or is that something that you look to grow into? I love how I just said thank you. I just assumed that you're giving me a compliment. <laughs> I am giving you a compliment like, because it was, it was <laughs> fine. Like, I mean, like, yeah. we, got, we give flowers <laughs> here, bro. We give a lot of flowers. <laughs> That's it. Um, definitely. So is that something that you wish to grow into? You definitely. Know, like, you know, with this all coming out, I've been so inspired by all the artists. I was like, damn, they really do that. Mm, <laughs> like, they, yeah. You guys get on stage. Yeah. You transform. I think that is so cool. And I, I was just watching from the sidelines, being able to be like, okay, 
okay, you know, like when you step on stage and then meeting you and you're such this like authentic character on stage and then that that translates as well and, nice. and and with blessed as well and all the other amazing artists i was like okay this is this is something that's possible also yeah yeah yep. hearing your, your guys backstories i was like okay I'm, I'm gonna give it a shot why no, not 100 and every failure i'm someone who strongly believes that every failure is just one step closer to success so even if that doesn't work out i'm sure i'll find something else quote that that's a quotable something we'll say else that again. That every <laughs> failure is one step closer to success we we got like quote that, that. Yeah. we got we got yeah, to use that you. one day but that's that's what it is and with that being said i mean what what would you say was your biggest learning experience from this whole from this whole thing probably to just like give it give it a shot yeah cuz every one of you guys the artists have all have this backstory this this struggle and i think instead of seeing these like these upcoming challenges as like oh but what if i don't make it it's like no but if you don't make that that just becomes a part of your legend that's right that, that's that's a part of you now that's so cool that's right there's so much momentum behind this yeah. and so much inspiration i want that to translate into what i'm doing with music yeah. and everything else and i do want to come up with my own sound and find what that is whatever that is mean it means to me and be authentic in it because I think that's really important as well as an ambassador for the film. No, I feel yeah, it. As an artist. I, I think that we all wear several hats, particularly, you know, like, you, you know with your artistry, you're a cultural leader, you know, even with this show, man, everything you touch turns to gold. Bless. You know, obviously I come from an artist background now in the, in the film and everything in between. Yaz is an incredible actress, but she's got an incredible voice and like she's Thank probably you. playing it down, but her demos, man, are lit. And it's just like oh, yeah. she just needs she just needs to keep hustling and, and yeah. chipping away in, in the studio and before well, you we know just it, she's around and be have fun. Wearing a few few hats. That's yeah. it. But that's what it's about. Like I think, you know, art and, and creativity, it's like you can't be limited in just one. I think we all know that at this point. No, exactly. It's just like Absolutely. you know, being a creative is and I actually learned that a bit later, you know what I mean? It's it was actually during the COVID period where I was just like, I got to do more than just this one thing because yeah. I feel like there's more that can, that I can offer. You know, there's more about my personality Definitely. that can be done than just limiting myself to just one aspect. And I feel, you know, you you guys understand that a lot, and I actually admire, admire what you're what you're doing, which was very important why we wanted to have you guys on the show. Obviously, mate, I'm, I'm just putting the two and two together. I mean, from when this film was made. Um, you know, I'm assuming, Maka, you ran into, you ran, would have ran into the pandemic like a lot of us would have um, in the process of creating. I guess, was there challenges? What were some of the biggest challenges for you to make this film? Because I'm saying that so people understand your determination as a, mm. as a, as a creative and mm -hmm. as a filmmaker for you to want to really get through all that. And I can't even imagine all the moving. you got to be built different. you got to be built <coughs> different. Mac is built different. Mac, you know what I mean? And that's what we, uh, you know what I mean? No, no, not everyone can do this. Let's just say that not everyone can do this. So, I mean, what, what were those challenges uh, you had to overcome and eventually to bring this to the Australian people and the international market, bro? Yeah, man, look, we started this thing five years ago it's um some of the hardest things in this industry is getting funding for a film so that was a challenge in itself obviously i was i was a, a documentary background trying to make a drama so i was considered a new a newcomer you know so i had to prove myself in that sense and that's where the fire started um that's where i had to like see it to the end to prove a lot of people wrong mm -hmm. um you know once we we got up and running um then I was dealt with all the, the bullshit in the music industry, you know, and trying to line up with festivals and like, yeah. you know, I, I, I'd lined up, you know, certain artists early on, including yourself, you know, just artists who I was, I was down with and friends with. And then, you know, it, sometimes that gets muddled between managers and publishers and labels getting involved. So there was that hurdle to get through. Then we were ready to shoot um, festivals in New South Wales, particularly were uh, under fire i guess they were um you know the government was waging war on on festivals with with the drug scenario there's a few ods so like festivals that we had you know locked in a shoot were no longer the following year because they, they couldn't afford the police presence and all these other issues that the government threw at them mm -hmm. and then uh, you know another bite of the cherry um bushfires hit festivals cancelled had a little break um uh, next festival floods and then we were like, man, this movie's not supposed to be. Then we had two week rehearsals, ready to pull the trigger. Then COVID happened. Mm. And this is like, we're talking three years in. Um, I'm talking, I had a lot of personal money tied up in the film until the funding came through. So there's also the personal hurdles. You know, obviously, I had a massive mortgage. Finally got to my, myself from the little ghetto shack that we grew up in to, to buy a house in Maroubra with my, my wife and, and two Congrats. kids. Yep. And, um, 
and I just struggled, man. Like my business had no production going for a year, a year and a half, you know, put a lot of pressure with my wife. I just had a new baby and, um, I just questioned it. You know, I just, I was stressed. I was doubting the whole thing, wondering if I'd, you know, do I swim to the other end or turn around? You know, like I don't want to drag my family through Mm. this shit. And it just got really, really tough. But like I said, that first fire in my belly started from people saying that it wasn't possible or I couldn't pull it off. So I just kept listening to that voice. It's almost like the more I get told no, the more I want to do it. And uh, I had to see it through, man. And then we, we found little windows of festivals that were like in between lockdowns, you know, and I'd sort of self-fund those. We'd go and capture that. We'd put some edits together. We'd show the finances saying, like, this is the goal we can get. We just need your backing. And then, you know, young Maxi, who was 13, when I cast him, he's now 17, he's gone through puberty, his balls were dropping, his voice was deep deepening. And, uh, so I was dealing with a lot of... A lot of moving parts, man. And um, for me, the most monumental moment was definitely uh, finishing the last scene, um, which was actually the opening scene with the, with the dinghy paddling up the river. Yeah. Um, and then the Sydney Film Festival premiere was really emotional for me just because it was five years later. A lot yeah. of people backed me. A lot of didn't. So, I, you know, there's a lot of tears that, that night uh, just personally in my own moment. So, yeah, man, it was challenge but we got there we're giving you gonna give you your flowers bro like right right here like i mean hats off to you man like that feeling like i mean with everything that every everyone was going through during that period but all of this weight uh, being carried and i'm sure you had an amazing team as well with you and behind you <coughs> excuse me that that really helped got out emotional. with that you know <laughs> i got emotional man i mean like this is real this is real <laughs> shit bro this ain't this ain't no it's in a game and lastly Yes, I want to say with you, like after this film comes out, I have no doubts about like where you're going to go with your career and with everything, man. I I see it and um and I and I wish it for you. Is there anything that you can share? Like, what's next for you? What are you working on? What are you thinking about doing Ooh, next? Ooh, this and that, <laughs> everything. I've like, I I'm I'm like jack of all trades, master to none. I just try, like to try things out. Yeah. Everything. Like I write, I was writing a children's book. I was like, I'm gonna try NFTs. I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna do music. Yep. I think there's, it's like you said. As soon as someone says you can't do something, you're like, nah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna prove you wrong. There. And it's just like I, I just want to keep trying things while I'm in my early twenties with acting. I just want to keep, you know, just doing, like I said, telling authentic stories, making, making it. Um, something to be proud of as well I when I look back I want to be like yes I'm so glad I did that and it, if it doesn't sit well with me then I'm, I'm I don't want to participate so I, I just want to keep working towards what feels true to me and I think the rest will just will like if I do the work I do believe that the universe has good things out there for me and for everyone who you know puts it out there so say it it will it will work out it. if I just do the hard yeah. work no, 100. Yeah. And it's coming through. Um, it's you. evident from both of you. And I want to thank you guys very much for coming on the show and thank taking you. your time and sharing this. Before we leave, though, Maka, let them know when it's dropping. Ew. Let them know where they can see it. Let them know. August 11, we're out in cinemas on the East Coast. And then end of August, we're uh, all over Australia on Paramount Plus, the new streamer. So Ooh. do yourselves a favor and uh, support local films, particularly stories against the grain and gritty like this one 100 it's made it. local but this is a global film yeah, right? this say, film is, on, this film minute, is not, not your standard local you're so, you're so so short. big up yeah. big up yeah. before wise before we go i've got some flowers for you too bro i really want to thank you for first of all like day dot when i pitched this to you you're on board you've supported me even through all the COVID and all the years that we, it should have fallen through you turned up like a professional on set you know you it was a scorching hot day and takes took forever and you never complained <laughs> once and you just backed me from day to day, brother, and I'm Always. proud of everything you've achieved in your career, not just in music, but everything you're doing. And it's, it's, this is special for me, this interview, so thank you, brother. Thank you, my bro. On, on the real, man. Thank you, man. Real talk. I'm always going to be here for both of y'all yeah. as well. So, no, but, thank you. I thank loved you. watching you Much on appreciate. stage with Bless. I was <laughs> thank there. I was you know how we do it. You know, we get it, we, we get, we get it <laughs> the in. The energy was real. That's it. Yeah, We're going to give this energy. We're going to keep this energy. Definitely. Now, Bless you. Thank you so much for coming through, man. This is By Your Side. Let's get it.